I guess I'm defending Cedar Point this time, kind of. What's up, cool people? Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. If you haven't yet, press that subscribe button down below. We're trying to get to 22,000 subscribers. We're only 200 away. Things have been moving like crazy and I haven't added any kind of publicity to this yet or advertising yet. Although I think I'm going to fairly soon. But my point in that is it's very important that you guys subscribe, you guys uh, get the word out that these videos exist and send them to people who they may be helpful for. For those of you who do not know, I'm gonna do just a really quick recap of what actually has happened recently. And uh, really this is gonna go back a couple of years. So two years ago, Cedar Point announced that they were going to be redoing an entire boardwalk. It was shown on that concept art that they were going to be doing a wildcat ride, a wild mouse ride, um, which is what they actually did. And it was rumored and then later confirmed that it was going to be Zamperla. Um, so Zamperla came in, they did wild mouse and wild mouse was terrible. <laughs> in every possible way, especially as far as it was like their big early uh, park entry ride that they'd added for that year. And it was never open. So much so that they added another ride to their early park entry lineup to make up for there being this horrible thing that didn't work <laughs> at Cedar Point because uh, they could not get Wild Mouse to really work very well. And even today, it's still a very unreliable ride at Cedar Point. And that's a smaller ride. It's Wild Mouse. Uh, later on that year, then, we discovered that Cedar Point was also going to be doing uh, Top Thrill 2. And we were very excited about Top Thrill 2 with some hesitancy. Who's going to be doing this ride? All that kind of stuff. And surely it couldn't be Zamperla, or at least those were my words, <laughs> right? Um, no, it was Zamperla. <laughs> so again, was rumored and then was confirmed it was going to be Zamperla doing that ride. Um, well, okay, Zamperla had never done anything bigger, any project bigger than 150 feet. Um, doing this ride was ridiculous. The whole idea of one of the biggest rides in the world um, being redone by Zamperla, who had been mainly a kids manufacturer before this, um, it really seemed like there was a, a big leap in, um, in what they had created before to what they were going to be creating here. A, a huge inconsistency where, it, like, are they going to have the information that they need? Um, well, Zamperla, th that ride comes out and it's amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> it's one of my favorite rides I've ever ridden. And within a week it closes because something, I, I, we're still not en entirely sure what, it seems like something to do with the wheels, but we don't know exactly what that is. Um, something didn't work because you chose a smaller group to work on something um, that had only done kids stuff and did not have the ability to create all the models that they needed to make sure that something having this many forces on it would actually hold up. I, I mean, I'd been like shouting from the very beginning, especially once we discovered that Zamperla was going to be doing Top Thrill 2, um, that this was a bad idea. Why in the world would they choose this? Why would they want to do that? Um, well, put a pin in that because we've got a little bit more coming too because Cedar Point, now it's being rumored and everything always starts with rumors. So it's being rumored that also Cedar Point has a couple of flat rides that are being done by Zamperla also. Um, so all that information coming in together, take that pin out real fast. Uh, it looks to me like Cedar Point tried to get themselves a deal. And they were like, you know, Zamperla was like, hey, look, we will give you Wild Mouse. We'll give you a couple flat rides and we'll give you uh, and we'll redo Top Thrill 2 for you just to sweeten the deal, just to sweeten the pot. When they could have chosen and should have chosen someone along the lines of Intamin, someone along the lines of super projects like RMC or even B&M to come in and to create a massive hyper project for Cedar Point. Someone with a lot more chops 
with a lot more ability to, uh, you know, run tests and make sure that every part of their product was really going to work. It doesn't mean it would never have any problems. Of course, every single ride, no matter what it is, is going to have its problems. And Cedar Point often, I think, has more problems because they push their developers to create such ridiculously huge projects um, in comparison to like King's Island where King's Island just kind of waits for something to be a bit more standard and then creates something like Orion. But a ride the size of Orion had already been done three times by the time that they created Orion. Um, so they, they're more reliable because they always make sure that every ride that they have has been already tested to its fullest extent and they have a lot less downtime because of that. Cedar Point, on the other hand, tries to be cutting edge with everything they can, that they can. That's, that's a good way to put it. Um, so because of that, there's a problem. Now, that's not me saying that that's a problem with Cedar Point. Like, it's fine that Cedar Point does that, that they push things. That's also what makes them less reliable. But then on top of that, Cedar Point also seems to have this inflation of self-worth <laughs> that maybe goes beyond what it really should be. And again, put a pin in that because we'll get to that in just a second here. So anyway, I've been very clear on my position with Sam Perla and with Cedar Point throughout this entire time. <laughs> I've, I've made it very clear that I was not a fan of any of this uh, from the very beginning of Cedar Point announcing it. And when Cedar Point's biggest ride quit working at a week in, I, you know, felt vindicated, but I also felt very frustrated because uh, it was just like, man, this is a ride that was so good. But... I know you guys don't really need to hear me say the same things I've said forever <laughs> in this post and that also a lot of other people are saying also like everyone has made their Cedar Point bad video this year because Cedar Point deserves it honestly <laughs> but um, it's just we don't need that instead I, I'm coming at it from a different perspective in this video. So come along with me, let's go. Instead, we're going to talk about why this is a good thing. Why Cedar Point actually did some good things in this and why it actually has caused me to trust them more, even though I don't trust their judgment in like who to choose, who to be a part of this. I do trust them. I trust their write ops. I trust the people who are uh, looking for, you know, little cracks or issues inside their rides. I trust the safety of Cedar Point and let's talk about why. But also there are a couple of other peripheral reasons why this also could be a good thing. And we're going to talk about those also. So first of all, as far as safety goes, first of all, Cedar Point caught this before it was an issue. It could have easily been that you actually had like if it's a wheel issue, you could have had a wheel or a piece of the wheel actually fly off. Um, and as far as we know, that's not what happened. If it is something that happened, that's something they caught, you know, in an early test of the day or something like that. And then they closed it down or in a late test, but somehow they caught it without anybody actually seeing it besides any of the workers who I would assume would be under NDAs on that. <laughs> um, if they did have something like that happen and something actually like a piece of shrapnel actually flew off the ride, um, that would be massively terrible uh, publicity for Cedar Point and absolutely deservedly so. Um, it is cool though that, and nice that Cedar Point has all the awnings and stuff that are set up over uh, Top Thrill 2. Like there is a reason why those are there and that reason is safety. So I appreciate that definitely one way or another because even if something bad were to happen, that would be there. But on top of that, it's also nice to know that Cedar Point is checking thoroughly enough that they can find the issue and they can find the issue before there's actually a problem, before someone gets hurt, before one of the rides 
flies off or a piece of the ride flies off, anything like that, we don't wanna ever see something like that happen. So in these mega construction pro projects for Cedar Point to be able to find the problem and just close it down, that's definitely good. It's also good because Cedar Point has done this at a great expense to themselves. The people have canceled their trips because of this. People have decided not to come because of this, where before it, like the, the park was booked, <laughs> you, you have a lot less of that. And that is good to know that Cedar Point will, will set aside their profits, which doesn't seem like a normal thing for them. They've been slashing money wherever they possibly could um, to see that they're willing to slash their own profits for the purpose of our safety is definitely a good thing. You know, that's where I'm really going to draw the line. If Cedar Point ever does something where we have lost our ability to be safe because they need to make a buck, that's a real problem. That's a problem that goes way beyond the fact that they may get rid of a show or some sort of experience. Um, even though I want those things and I wish they would bring as many experiences to Cedar Point as they possibly could, where I would really draw the line is when it comes to safety, not when it comes to entertainment stuff, even though, again, I absolutely love that. And I think they're losing out on market share by getting rid of some of their entertainment stuff because other people, <coughs> Bush Gardens <coughs> does it way, way better. Now, on top of that, also, once again, talking about them losing money on themselves, they just, it looks like, made a a rig, a wheel rig. Obviously, they had to have, <laughs> at least for one of the trains, because they were testing it at night. Um, so with those little tests that they were doing of Top Thrill 2, um, with getting the wheels on, I even saw them getting the wheels on. Um, with all of that, they were really spending some time and money in creating that stuff. Or Zamperla was. I'm not sure who would who would have the onus on them with this. I would assume it would have to do with Zamperla. So recently, Cedar Point came out with a Twitter post. Uh, this Twitter post said, Top Thrill 2 remains closed as Zamperla, the ride's manufacturer, continues working on a mechanical modification to the coaster vehicles. While we do not yet have a reopening date, we hope to provide more information soon. We sincerely appreciate your continued patience and look forward to the reopening of Top Thrill 2 as soon as possible. The way that they mentioned Zamperla here makes me wonder <laughs> if they're like putting the onus on Zamperla. And now Zamperla, the rides manufacturer, it's almost like they're trying to shift the blame. Cedar Point... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's your problem. You're the ones that did this. You're the ones that tried to take this kid's manufacturer and be like, oh, they're going to save us some money. Now, in all fairness, if, if Zamperla said they're going to save you money, you know, like, honestly, it should be open for a lawsuit. But in the future, think of your guests before you think of your profits. You can't just spend the bottom buck. I mean, I could come up to you and say, I could build this ride. I could do it for $25. And you could be like, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, we're going to do that. Or you could be like, wait a minute, you've never built anything. So no, we're not going to do that. In the same way, you would think because a whole bunch of lay people saw this coming, you would think that this would be a thing that you could have saw, saw coming also. But instead you were like, well, oh, they're going to save us money. Okay, yeah, we're, we're going to get four rides out of this instead of one ride for the same cost that would have cost us to build Intamin. Well, that same cost that it would have cost for Intamin to have built this would have saved you so much time, heartache, and money because of people choosing not to buy tickets to your park. Um, so <laughs> like just spend that money, spend the money up front. You're going to have that ride in your park for the rest of forever or for a very, very long time, probably throughout my lifetime. So why in the world would you not just spend the money to do it? especially when you're already slashing the offerings that you're providing right and left, you know, maybe pay your CEOs a little bit less and pay Intamin a little bit more. Anyway, this isn't supposed to be a mean thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they did find the issue. 
I'm glad they found the issue. And they did also, like they're being very cautious with this. Um, I do think it's frustrating that they're putting the onus on Zamperla. Not that they don't deserve that to some degree, because they certainly do. This is not just a Cedar Point issue. It is also a Zamperla issue. Um, but you you can't really separate one from the other. They both worked in cahoots to end up with this problem happening. But I'm also glad that they continued to keep the ride closed. Since they came out with this wheel rig, they they tested it, they discovered it still wasn't good enough, they got rid of it. I, I, this is me conjecturing there because I don't know exactly that that's what they did, um, but that's what it looks like, that's what a lot of things point to. Um, so with that, you know, at least it's cool that you can see that they did all of this um, and that they're willing, once again, to lose profits in order to actually keep us safe in the parks because how terrible would it be if they tested it and then they were just like well it's not the best but uh you know what it'll last like two weeks it's fine let's just get it out there that way people buy some more tickets that would really make me mad <laughs> so instead it's so much better that they're willing to be like okay wait nope we didn't quite get it right we're gonna close it down again gives me trust that Cedar Point is doing the right thing on our behalf, um, that they are really working hard to make sure that their rides are the safest and are the best for us to be able to enjoy in future years and this year also, or whenever this one does open. So when it doesn't work, removing it and replacing it, redoing it is definitely the best way for that to work. And again, gives me trust in you, Cedar Point. Um, I am looking for the positives of you, Cedar Point. <laughs> I'm looking to find the good things. And there are so many good things. I mean, you see it in every video that I make. You know, when I make a vlog, you're gonna see all the entertainment and all the uh, great rides and all the different times when I have short lines that I can ride in. Um, you're also going to see the negatives. And that's because I'm talking about both. I'm sorry, Cedar Point, if I've ever made you mad, but sometimes you deserve it. But that also means that sometimes you deserve it for me to give you accolades. There's a reason why I come back to your park over and over and over again, because it is a great place. It's a very fun place to come and visit. And it's a place that I want people to know about. That's why I have so many people reaching out to me saying, I planned my trip because I watched your videos, because I've let them know exactly what to expect for their for their park day. <laughs> so I want people to come to Cedar Point. I want them to enjoy it. And I want them to have the right expectations of your park. Um, and again, it's a place that I absolutely love. So this is in no way ever me trying to say that I hate Cedar Point, that it's a terrible place, that it's ridiculous, it's stupid, all that kind of stuff but you're not without criticism. <laughs> you definitely deserve some criticism sometimes. So do I, and that's okay. We can take it, we can hack it, see your point. We can do it, we're good, <laughs> we're strong. So one more piece of this, this is kind of a different aspect now. It really has to do with the future of Cedar Point rather than with what's already happened and how they can fix it. Obviously, they're working on fixing it, and I'm proud of Cedar Point for doing that, for fixing what they needed. I mean, I'd hate it. How, how awful would it be if they just, like, built this massive thing, and then they're like, well, we can't get it to work, so we're just going to get rid of it. Whoo! That'd be horrible. <laughs> so instead, they're working on it. They're redoing something in a really good way or as good of a way as they can. So I'm definitely excited to see that kind of thing happen from Cedar Point. But in the future, how can they learn from this? And that's what I'm hoping is really going to make the difference in coming years that they will learn from this mistake. Let's hope. So I'm hoping that maybe the backlash and the frustration and the negative publicity and all of that kind of stuff is going to uh, encourage them to stop 
cheaping out on things. <laughs> Don't choose the cheapest option. Choose the cheapest option that's been vetted, that's been ready, that you are sure is going to create something fantastic for you. Um, don't choose the one where you think you can like elevate them. You know, I know that's what you did. I know that's what you did with Intamin. And I think that's the reason why Cedar Point has such a huge head. <laughs> because I think they're just like, wow, well look, we created Intamin. I created you. I can break you. You know, the, the, the Regina George of theme parks. They just think that, well, I'm, I'm the one that did it. How dare they have a party without inviting me? Do I know you? See, what up, dog? She thinks she's gonna have a party and not invite me? Who does she think she is? You're right, hon. I like invented her, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just like, that's so dumb. You have to do the right thing with the right people. Um, you have to create something really good. And if you've elevated someone, a company like Intamin, to a fantastic degree, that doesn't mean that they owe you. That means that they now, you've created a great worth for another company. There's nothing they owe you. You just created a monster. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Which is great. You're a monster in your own right. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that you don't owe other people or that you should never pay other people a uh, correct wage or a correct amount um, or whatever they think they deserve for creating the product that you want. You are wanting massive, massive stuff. You're going to have to pay the price for it. Again, you know, slash a CEO's budget just a little bit and instead bring that over to Cedar Point. I'm sorry to the CEOs, they'll get over it. So maybe also this will create an environment where Cedar Point will realize that they are not the big be all end all that they think they are and that they will give the money that's needed and continue to work or start to work again with big names like Intamin or like RMC who they've seemingly stopped working with um, because of some bad blood or things like that. Instead, Cedar Point Get over it, <laughs> work with them. These are some of the biggest manufacturers. These are some of the greatest uh, providers that there are in the theme park entertainment business. You really need to work with these people. Uh, we are expecting some awesome things from you and you're expecting awesome things from other people. You gotta pay for that in order to get it. And to not lose tons of money off of these things that these smaller producers, not that they're bad, you know, uh, Zamperla's not bad. It's just, you can't expect Zamperla to make this kind of leap in their production and not have problems like this. Again, if lay people like myself can see this coming miles away, why could you not? What I'm really hoping the most though is for Cedar Point to realize the absolute worth and necessity that their workers are. Uh, we are putting our lives in your workers' hands. Pay them. Pay them the amount that they deserve, not the $15.00. Pay them the $20 they made in the pandemic. Um, you had fewer people coming and you had more money that you were giving these people. You know, pay the people what they need. Uh, give them that living wage. Give them a good way to be able to live outside of your dangerous norms. Give them some ability to be able to do what is necessary for them. Um, you, you know, like this has shown me how important uh, the mechanics and the maintenance people and the workers are because the workers are the people who spot the problem first. The mechanics are the people who actually do the work in fixing it or who actually diagnose the problem and um, realize that there really is an issue. Those people are absolutely invaluable to you. <laughs> you cannot lose them. You cannot lose the talent that you have. You need to keep them and you need to have some of the best people. Now, I, I realize I self-defeated just a little bit there. They found that at the $15 an hour wage that you're paying them. Um, but don't they deserve more than that? 
And I'm really hoping also that maybe in the future, Cedar Point will never sink so much money into a project that they can't afford any extras. Amid this issue, um, how cool would it be if, you know, they they could be like, well, we don't have Top Thrill 2, but we do have Frontier Festival. Go check out the Frontier Festival. Well, we don't have Top Thrill 2, but we do have a great nighttime spectacular that's happening right now. Some way for them to pivot in something that's really incredible that they are doing at the park. Instead, there's no way to pivot. There's nothing to pivot to. There's no Forbidden Frontier. There's no Wild Frontier Nights. There's no special events. Right now, there's just, there's a couple of shows, which I love. I absolutely love those. And there's another one coming soon. But right now, there's nothing that you can divert attention away from. The only thing you had was Top Thrill 2. So when Top Thrill 2 fell through, then you've got nothing to be like, look, there's something exciting for this season. It's just a litany of gloom and doom. Don't do that. Instead, there's so many other things that you can encourage through live entertainment, through live acts, through something that's going to be exciting for inside the park. Don't pigeonhole yourself into one thing. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Please let me know down below. What do you guys think? Are there some positives to this? And what could those positives be? I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. And uh, also, please go press that subscribe button, press the like button, um, all that kind of stuff. Also, June 8th in like, let's see, three days, we have a meet and greet at Cedar Point. This video should be out, I think, the day before that. Uh, so please go check that out. If you're going to be at Cedar Point, please come and join me out on the beach. I'll be there with Droco. Um, I believe Along for the Ride is going to be there too. I've heard of a couple other YouTubers that I think are going to also be hanging out too. So you can come and hang out with all of us at on the beach there. Um, we're going to have a blast. We're going to have some games. We're going to have actually like I, I think we're going to be doing a drawing for some prizes um, through through my merch stuff. So go check out merch too um, and buy something if you want, but also you might win something uh, while you're there. Uh, we're gonna be going to see the very first show at Cedar Point. So all that kind of stuff, it's all gonna be really fun. Um, and we'll just get to talk and take pics on the beach and all that kind of stuff. So it should be really, really fun. Um, and also uh, go check out the join button down below. Come and hang out with us and you'll actually get some cool emojis that you can put at the end of your, of your uh, uh, name. Uh, so people will see that you are one of those special people who is a supporter of the channel. Uh, but on top of that also, I have a new video every single Sunday for you to see. Sometimes they're bloopers, sometimes they're special challenges that you guys have created specifically for uh, for uh, Patreon or for members only. I think it's called members only. I have trouble with the, <laughs> with the names at this point. Um, so go check all that kind of stuff out. Also, you can get you, you can get additional stuff on Patreon if you want to do that. It's the same stuff, uh, but there's a little bit of a difference in value because you don't get some of the uh, some of the perks that you would get on YouTube. So uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out uh, and let's go. Hey, thanks for watching. I release theme park related videos at least a couple times a week, so press that subscribe button if you made it this far. Also, check out similar videos in the playlist to the right or find my newest video to the left. Thanks again, and let's go!